a gold and silver stacking banker blows the whistle on his bank. Yankee Stacking is sponsored by SDBullion.com. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. And in today's video, I'm going to read a couple emails from my viewers, one of which is from a silver and gold stacker who is a banker, and he is going to expose what is going on at his bank. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And at the end, if you really enjoyed it, share it with your friends and family. Let them know what's going on right now. And if you haven't subscribed, you better do so quickly because I am nearing 100,000 subscribers. And when I do, only the subscribers will be able to have a chance at winning this one ounce gold coin. <laughs> Here, piggy piggy, <laughs> the year of the pig proof 24 karat gold coin from the legendary Perth Mint. Now, my video last week entitled A Banking Collapse is Coming Five Critical Steps to Take Now garnered over 50,000 views and sparked a lot of comments and emails. The first is from Dennis. And he says, Yankee, for the uninformed viewer, your bank bail-in video gave the impression that banks could bail in deposits regardless of the amount. It is my understanding that only amounts over the FDIC insured amount would be subject to bail-in. Since you have a significant following, it might warrant a follow-up segment to clarify. Regards, Dennis from Texas. Fair point, Dennis. I tried to be even-handed while I warned you in that video of Bank bail and risk. I apologize. Deposits totaling less than 250000 are covered by the Deposit Insurance Fund, or DIF. And technically, they're safe from future bank bail-ins. However, there are two points I want to make. First, that amount is subject to change and has changed several times throughout the years. They've gone up, and most recently in response to the banking crisis of 08. However, there is no promise that the amount couldn't be reduced. And I think in a systemic collapse scenario, it will be tremendously hard for banking institutions not to go after deposits less than $250,000. Insanely difficult. And of course, they may resort to money printing to alleviate the pressure. The, you know, the Fed could print a bunch of currency, uh, you know, the treasury could step in, but I still think money under the amount is potentially at risk. And the second point is that the DIF is woefully inadequate for a massive banking crisis. As I explained in my prior video, the fund only has about a buck 20 for every $100 worth of deposits. That's it. Sure, the FDIC can and does step in to cover deposits for failing banking institutions. They do that frequently. Well, maybe not frequently, but they do it from time to time. And it's usually the very small banks and it's not widespread. But that's not the systemic risk I'm talking about nor concerned about. It's when multiple large banks start failing. The dominoes fall quickly. That's the concern. A complete collapse of our U.S. banking system. And of course, that would have global repercussions. Don't think that's far-fetched, okay? We came within hours of living this nightmare back in 2008 when the practices of the banksters were exposed. And that brings me to the email from a gold and silver stacking banker who I think blows the whistle on his bank. Now, I'm going to call him Thomas to protect his identity. I'm not going to mention the specific bank, but he says... Hi, Yankee. I've been watching your videos for a while on YouTube, and I just wanted to share some information with you that you may or may not already know. I currently work as a process manager at a large bank. I worked at a small neighborhood bank with about six branches for about a, a year uh, as their VP of IT. So Thomas has a, uh, a, a different perspective with a big bank. He says, we recently had our first major meeting of the year, although I cannot share the specifics of the meeting, obviously. I can, however, say that the presenter shared some very interesting information. 
One specific piece of information was a graph that showed the Federal Reserve economic data deposits from 1970s till now. And you can see the graph here. Basically, this shows that for the first time ever in recorded history, deposits have decreased amongst all commercial banks, meaning people are beginning to put their money elsewhere. The first time ever. Now, that's remarkable, but frankly, I'm not overly surprised. My household has already put their savings in the Bank of Yankee, and we've stored a significant portion of wealth in precious metals, like the sampling of silver rounds you see right here. I love the buffaloes, especially iconic. The Morgan styles are great. Um, the rounds from SD Bullion, I love as well. These are great, and I got them for a great, great price. So rounds. Love silver rounds, love gold, and that's uh, where I have put a significant percent of our wealth. He goes on and says, the bank I currently work for is concerned about what's coming financially and are doing everything they can to keep and obtain customer deposits. Fraud is going up, especially after the PPP money has run out as the fraudsters are now targeting business deposits and checks again. Yep, they're doing everything they can to keep depositors, to gain new ones. And yes, the stimulus is gone. The you know savings has tanked. Credit card debt is soaring. Guys, this is not a healthy economy. And the fact that the banking institutions are desperate for deposit is a good indication of that. I remember pulling out our cash seeing the uh, uh, deer in the headlight look from the tellers. In fact, some of them were saying, you know, uh, so, Mr. Yankee, why are you uh, taking this uh, money out? <laughs> like it was any of their business. But they asked me that sometimes. And that was a while ago. I can't imagine what it's like to do that now. In fact, tell me your experience with deposit withdrawals in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're running into. Quarter over quarter from the last year, our overall bank deposits have gone down and interest rates are going up, which puts even more strain on the bank's bottom line than usual. I do have to say that our internal compliance and risk departments are extremely good, but from everything that we're all hearing, there might not be much left at the end if bank balance occur. Who is going to trust federally registered banks if they take people's money to bail themselves out from economic collapse? And the FDIC only insures a buck 20 for every hundred dollars. That's right. <laughs> no one will trust the banking system anymore. Even the folks oblivious to this current situation. What a great way to introduce CBDCs. What a great way indeed to introduce a central bank digital currency. Now, a retail or individual-based uh, CBDC could come prior to the crisis. As you saw in the last video, the elites are seriously preparing for a bank bail-in, or it could come in response to a crisis. But either way, a central bank digital currency is coming. If the major U.S. and international banks do initiate a bail-in, everyone, and I mean everyone, is effed, even the so-called wealthy. I used to help manage a local branch here in the state of New York. I would order money every week and fill the ATMs twice a week. Most banks only carry between $250,000 and $750,000, maybe up to $1 million at any one time during the week, depending on location and how busy they are. The most ATMs have is a maximum holding allowance of $160,000. Neither the bank tellers nor ATMs will be able to handle bank runs if they occur. As I'm sure you're aware, most of the cash limitations are due to mitigating risk. I'm very aware of this, Thomas. Cash would be gone in hours. That's why cash makes a very important short-term prep. 20s are my preferred denomination. Now, Thomas gives us his conclusion here when he says the only answer to what is potentially coming is putting our excess cheap money into hard assets gold silver ammo and personal responsibility becoming our own bank thanks for listening 
Thomas. Yes, be the bank. I've been saying that now for years. Love it. One last thing, though, really important. Institutional banks do not make the lion's share of their profits from loaning out deposits. I'm not sure if you knew that. It's true. They make most of their uh, profits from investing risky. And those risks are largely hidden from the public and would only come to light during a crisis. So make sure you're doing what Thomas said at the end of that email. Put your excess cheap money into hard assets, gold, silver, ammo, and other important preps. Well, that was a great email, fantastic insights, and quite the warning from this banking insider. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.